String theory is an important area of research in modern physics in which the fundamental particles in nature are thought of as the musical notes or excitation modes of elementary strings. These strings have the shortest meaningful length in nature, known as the Planck length, equal to about 1 billion trillion trillionth, or 10 to the minus 33 of a centimeter. But they have no thickness, and for the theory to make sense, the universe must have nine space dimensions and one time dimension. Well, we're familiar with time and three of the space dimensions. The other six together are known as Calabi-Yau spaces. In string theory, as in a stringed instrument, the string must be stretched under tension in order to become excited. This tension is fantastically high, equivalent to a loading of about a thousand trillion 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 tons. String theories are classified according to whether or not the strings are required to be closed loops and whether or not the particle spectrum includes fermions, the particles that make up matter. In order to include fermions in string theory, there must be a special kind of symmetry called supersymmetry, which means that for every boson, a particle that transmits a force, there's a corresponding fermion. So supersymmetry relates the particles that transmit forces to the particles that make up matter. Supersymmetric partners to currently known particles haven't been observed in experiments yet, but theorists think this is because supersymmetric particles are too massive to be generated using present-day high-energy accelerators. Particle accelerators could be on the verge of finding evidence for supersymmetry in the next decade or so. Evidence for supersymmetry at high energy would be compelling evidence that string theory is a good mathematical model for nature at the smallest distance scales. In string theory, all the properties of elementary particles such as charge, mass and spin come from the vibration of the string. The easiest to understand is mass. The greater the vibration, the greater the energy. And since mass and energy are two sides of the same coin, higher mass comes from greater vibration. One of the major outcomes of work in unifying electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force was the so-called standard model of particle physics, which neatly describes all the elementary particles in nature and the forces between them. It includes six different types of lepton or lightweight particle, six types of quark, the exchange particles for the weak, strong and electromagnetic interactions, and the Higgs boson, which plays an important role in fixing the masses of the other particles. The standard model has agreed well so far with experimental data collected using particle accelerators, but physicists aren't completely happy with it. For one thing, it has no place for gravity. How then to get gravity into the scheme? A clue to this emerged while researchers were working on the quantum field theory of the strong force. Along the way, they came up with string theory as a way to explain the observed relationship between the mass and spin of hadrons, particles that can experience the strong force. In the end, a theory called quantum chromodynamics proved to be a better theory for hadrons. But string theory wasn't consigned to the trash can of ideas that had passed their sell-by date. It made one extremely interesting prediction. The existence of a particle, a certain excitation of string, with a rest mass of zero and an intrinsic spin of two units. Theorists had long known that there ought to be such a particle. It was none other than the hypothetical exchange particle of gravitation, the graviton. With this discovery that one of the essential vibrational modes of string corresponded to the graviton, string theorists realized they had a bigger fish to fry than trying to explain the ins and outs of hadrons. Their notions of elemental quivering threads might, it seemed, bear directly on the much sought after quantum theory of gravity, and not just because the graviton is predicted by string theory. You can stick a graviton into quantum field theory by hand if you like, but it won't do any good because you'll be blown away by infinities. 
particle interactions happen at single points in space-time so that the distance between interacting particles is zero. In the case of gravitons, the mathematics behaves so badly at zero distance that the answers come out as gobbledygook. String theory gets around this problem because the interacting entities aren't points, but lengths, which collide over a small but finite distance. As a result, the math doesn't self-destruct and the answers make sense. More on string theory in part two.